In this episode of the Azure Enablement Show, we're going to be talking about how you can use Azure AI Studio to build your own co-pilot. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Azure Enablement Show. I'm your host, Aaron Stark, and with me today are Natalie, Mickey, and Ivor Berry from Azure. They're going to be talking about Azure AI Studio and how you can use it to build custom co-pilots. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Aaron. I know we're talking about Copilot here, so I just want to remind our viewers a little bit about what Copilot is. Copilot is many things. It's an evolving service that leverages the power of AI to boost productivity. It's a conversational chat interface, lets you search for specific information, generate texts like emails, summaries, and you can even create images based on text prompts that you write. So the last thing I'll add is that it can also help with language translation, which is super awesome and can solve math problems. So for all you folks getting ready for your AP math exams, here you go. But you can do it all. Copilot is awesome. I feel like I also find new ways to interact with it every day. Um, I'm sure our viewers are pretty excited to dive into building their own AI assistance with Azure AI Studio. Natalie, can you tell us what they might need to get access to this? Absolutely. There are three basic requirements before you can get started. You need an Azure account, you need access to Azure OpenAI, and you also need access to Azure AI Studio. Got it. So once they have all of those, how do they start to get skilled up? Great question. Let me share my screen and show you an awesome collection that we've got for Azure AI Studio. The collection I'm showing here includes our learning paths. We've got great technical documentation, and some cool demos. Viewers are gonna find a link to this collection in the description below. Got it, thank you so much for walking us through that, Natalie. And Ivor, you're one of the AI content developers here at Microsoft, super excited to have you on with us today. Are you able to show us some of the learning modules that you've created? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be here. We're gonna be showing a few different things, mostly focused around AI Studio. Uh, the modules that you're referring to are out there on Learn, that are in, linked in the learning path that Natalie just showed. Got it. So the demo that we're going to be talking about today is actually this one about building your own co-pilot on your dev. This looks awesome. Can you walk us through all of this? Sure. There's a lot of content here. So for the sake of time, I'm going to skip a few sections, but I'll talk briefly about what we, what we do there. In this module, you'll learn about what it is to ground a model, uh, how to connect your data to a searchable index, create your own prompt flow, uh, and then be able to chat with generative AI using your data. So if we jump right in over in AI Studio, I've created a few things. One of them has been the deployments that we're going to be using for this, which is just a uh, embedding model and a GPT-3.5 turbo model, things we've heard, heard before. Additionally, we have our own data in here where I've created a handful of uh, indexes, one of these we'll be using today, about uh, a fictional travel agency. So today we're gonna be Margie's Travel that is uh, helping people find travel recommendations. Let's dive in. The, the demo that we're going to show is actually the exercise of that module is linked in the content that Natalie was referencing, where we are going to connect a prompt flow to our data. So we're gonna dive right in and do that. We go in here, we can create prompt flows from samples or standard. In the demo, we're going to be creating this one where we clone a multi-round uh, Q&A bot effectively um, called brochures. Now I'm gonna click clone. Now for the sake of time, we are actually going to use one that I created just before this call and show you what we can do with it. So here in our flow, the first thing we want to make sure is that our runtime is going. So in this drop down, you'll click this and click start. Fortunately, I already have it going, so we'll continue. First, you'll see inputs and outputs. And as we're going, we'll explore this graph of what actually happens in your prompt flow. So the inputs are really just chat history and whatever input from the user is. And our output is just defining what's going to come out of this flow at the end. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to be a chat output, the response from our model. As we're looking at this graph, we can see the different things that happen. First, we modify the query with the history. Now, this is really cool in that it takes the history of our conversation and actually queries our search resource and pulls interesting tidbits out to then send to the model later. Now, this is 
awesome because like if I'm talking about tr booking a trip to London, say, I can have been referencing London in the past and then say something about it and, and reference it without telling the model what it is. And the history with the context of the search response will tell the model what we're talking about. So can I give us a cool, cool answer? So we pull the history out with that one. Mm -hmm. Then we create a lookup, which is just searching our, our data source, which is an AI search resource at this point. Um, we then stitch all of that together to create our prompt context. So the contextual information from our search resource. We then come over here to create prompt variants, which just stitches the history together with the information that we pulled from our search resource. And then we send our chat with that context added to our GPT model, and then we get our output. So there's a lot of configuration that you can do in here. You'll see that I've actually selected our connection, which connects to a 3.5 turbo model. And come down here, I've connected it to a data resource that I've already created. Now, this is just what I was talking about, those brochures about Margie's travel. This is just going to be PDFs of uh, our fictional travel agency. It has information on uh, Las Vegas and New York and a, a few just big cities, for example. Here, there's actually a Python script that runs to generate that prompt uh, context, which is pulling that information out and putting it in a way that we can uh, send to the model. We def define our prompt variants. So this is just putting in our conversation history, our system prompt, and then the user prompt. And then we actually get the real answer from that. So we can go ahead and try it out. So if I say, where should I stay in New York? And here it's running through that flow that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. sending the inputs to our search resource, getting the information, uh, building out our entire prompt, and then sending it to the GPT-35 Turbo model that we have. And like you mentioned, it's going to use that context to give you a more clear answer. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the, the super powerful part about this whole RAG solution that you can build copilots on, where mm -hmm. it contextualizes your information. So like the, the general model out there is not going to know what Margie's travel is because frankly, Margie's right. travel doesn't exist. So I've pr provided this like special context. So you can extrapolate that idea to be anything internal to your company or any very specific data about you or what you're looking at. Uh, okay, perfect. So you can do a lot of really cool things grounding it in your data. So if we look at this response. It's talking about an answer from Margie's travel. So something that wouldn't exist out there right now. And it gives some suggestions about the hotels that you could stay in and then links to our website that is in those brochures in my search resource uh, for more information. So it's really cool that you can define like what this interaction with your AI model really looks like. We can go ahead and click deploy and we can deploy our Our endpoint, create it, and it's being created. Now, the deployment does take a while, and so we're not going to be able to dive into this one that I'm deploying right now, but the chat experience is identical to what you're seeing in the chat window. Wow, that was incredible. Uh, thank you again, Ivor and Natalie, for taking us through Azure AI Studio and Promptflow and for being on the Azure Enablement Show today. Thanks for having us, Aaron. It's great to be here. Thank you. Uh, yes, definitely a pleasure. And for our viewers, I hope you love this hands-on walkthrough as much as I did. If you have any questions for Natalie or Ivor, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below so we can get back to you. And if you like today's episode, be sure to smash that like button and remember to subscribe to the Azure Enablement Show so you don't miss any future episodes. Till next time.